Alright guys, it's V-Sing here and welcome to my round 8 battle for the CCL, the Combined Championship League, the league that I created and now run as well. Um, this is round 8 and my opponent this round is Lee, aka N7 Reagent, coach of the Cherry Grove Charizards. Uh, now for those of you that don't know, me and Lee, we're very good friends and I've actually never defeated Lee in a Wi-Fi battle, ever in my life. He's like two or three in all against me. So there was some pressure on me. And um I know last time, last round, I did sweep young Daniel with a Clefairy Sorry, sorry, so there is some pressure on me to live up to the hype of being able to sweep people with Clefairies, but um yeah, uh, before I get into the team preview and the battle and stuff, just make sure you check out all the links below, make sure you follow the CCL on Twitter, subscribe to the CCL on YouTube, check out our shop, we sell uh, merchandise and stuff like that, and go follow Lee on Twitter, he's a really good friend of mine, he's a very funny guy and a very nice guy, and he, and he will appreciate the follows on Twitter. And follow everyone in the league, and subscribe to everyone in the league that has a channel. Lee does not have a channel, but follow him on Twitter. Um, but so the teams, um, if you want an in-depth preview of my team I did upload a team builder yesterday so please go check that out it's like a very in-depth look at my team EV sets uh, EV spread sorry move sets and items and all that stuff but I'm um, a uh, quick rundown I am bringing physically defensive Nido Queen uh, Latios just a regular special attacking Latios tail glow three attack Manaphy all around bulky Registeel, uh, a life, I believe I'm Life Orb Sneasel with uh, a lot of uh, special attack investments with HP Fire and uh, a Rock Polish 3 attack Rhydon, uh, Adamant Rhydon. His team is Dragonite, Fortress, Hitmontop, Cafagragus, and Seismitoad, and the uh, Zapdos. So, uh, immediate thoughts in the team preview here. Uh, I see. Obviously, physically defensive fortress, that's fine, I prep for that. Uh, I'm assuming physically defensive Cafagragus because it, it deals with Mega Pinsir well. Uh, obviously, once Mega Pinsir physically touches it, it loses the aerial aid, so I expected that. Um, uh, I expect specially defensive, maybe even Assault Vest Seismitoad to try and deal with Manaphy, even though Manaphy does get energy ball so I don't know if that was a great choice on Lee's part and Zapdos I 100% expect to be scarfed again to deal with Manaphy and Mega Pinsir but I didn't bring Pinsir so we're fine so yeah um, as far as leads go I was kind of expecting Fortress to set up uh, spikes or stealth rocks or even the Cafagragus to set up toxic spikes because I know Lee likes to set up hazards um, so I thought my best bet was to lead with uh, the Needle Queen because I can pretty much take any one hit from any Pokemon he has brought and uh, I have decent coverage against everything on his uh, team. So I decided to lead with my Needle Queen. So let's get into the battle here. Lee is issuing a challenge. Yeah, I was hella nervous going into this, but I do lead with the Needle Queen and he leads with No Trade For You which is Zapdos. Now, I fully expected him to be Scarfed, so I was like, okay, if he's got Volt Switch, he can't lock himself into that, so I was free to fire off a Sludge Wave. Free Sludge Wave is free, and he brings in Scrotum, the Fortress, and I was like, fine, you know what, that's fine. I outspeed this thing so I can fire off a Flamethrower. Um, I, even if he wants to Earthquake, it shouldn't do too much to me, so I can take it, because I am physically defensive, obviously no burn, because Sheer Force. So I bring it down to its sturdy, and he does go for the Earthquake, which I'm like, that's fine, it won't do anything to me. But it actually does quite a lot, and after the battle, he revealed to me that he was fully offensive Fortress, which I was not expecting at all. But I was like, you know what, it's fine, I took the damage, fine. This thing goes down to a Flamethrower, he couldn't afford to swap out and take a lot of damage on anything else, because this Needle Queen is a big problem for his team. So big threat number one, Fortress, down and out. And he brings in Jimmy V! Young Vegas! And I was like, okay, I can't touch this thing. If he goes for a Skull, that's fine. Or if he goes for a knockoff, it's fine. Because I have Culverberry on this Latios. So I was fine with no matter what he did. Latios comes in for free. He does go for the Skull. And I was like, okay, no burn. No burn. And he doesn't get the burn. So I do pet Grass Knot. So I hit him with the Grass Knot. And it takes him down to around 25%, maybe 20%. Revealing to me that he may be uh, Assault Vest. 
He fires off his sludge wave, which is fine. I eat that up. And he does swap out because he knows the grass knot is coming. But um, at this point, I was like, I don't care. I kill it with a Psy Shock. So I go for the Psy Shock, I believe. He did uh, predict me to go for another Grass Knot, so he went into the Zapdos, but there was no need, no reason for me to go for it. And seeing that damage uh, from the Psy Shock, uh, I do see that he is offensive Zapdos, and he does reveal the U-turn. I wasn't expecting the U-turn, so that's why I stayed in. Luckily, I do live on 10 HP, and I was free to go for another Psy Shock, which I do here. I fire off his Psy Shock, he brings in his Cathagragus, and I will be able to scout what he is. Judging by the damage, he is physically defensive. So I was like, you know what? Latios here. He dies coming into hazards if he sets them up. So I'm just going to drop a Draco. I drop that Draco. Young Pokey game here. And it does a lot of damage to this Kefargagus. And I pretty much let Latios go down at this point. Unfortunately, oops, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to pause it. Unfortunately, he misses the Will-O-Wisp. In the long run, it honestly didn't make a difference. Um, here I was like, I'm, I'm sacking this off so I'm free to drop another Draco. Um, I can't remember if it killed or not. Uh, it might have killed. No it didn't, no it didn't, it barely lived. Yeah, so in the long run, him missing that Willow didn't matter because the Latios would have went down anyway. And the Carfagagus would have been at a point where I can bring in pretty much anything to get rid of it. Because my team is very, very offensive other than the Registeel. So I'm free to bring in whatever I want on his weakened Cafagragus and I bring in the Nidoqueen. Again, at this point, since Fortress is gone, free Sludge Wave and he does decide to sack the Cafagragus. So again, another huge, huge wall is gone and I am looking good. I am in a very good position because his fatness, his bulk is gone. Um, he does bring in the Vegas Dreamy here and I was like, okay. He may have sped crept a uh, defensive Needle Queen, so I have to swap out. And he revealed Sludge Wave and Scald, and I'm assuming Knockoff and Earthquake. So I was like, man, if he gets a free swap here, uh, even if he burns me, man, if he doesn't care. So I am somewhat free to uh, bring in that man, if he, and I can fire off an Energy Ball to kill this thing. But I expected him to swap out, knowing that, and I went for the Tail Glow, which yes, might have been preemptive. I don't know if I should have just fired off the energy ball. I kind of regret it now, but he does fire off a sludge wave. And it brings me down to like 75%-ish. And I was like, okay, fine. I have to kill it at this point. Ice Beam takes it out and Ice Beam hits pretty much everything. If you wanted to bring in the Zapdos to resist the energy ball, that was fine. I can Ice Beam it. Then uh, I am a plus three Manaphy right now. So his only option is to bring back in the Zapdos, which I do know is Scarfed. Now here, I'm going to pause it. Um, I did run a calc. I calced max special attack modest Scarf Zapdos on my Manaphy and it does like between 80 and 90%. So I, I, it is a roll if I live or not. So I decided, you know what, I'm not risking the roll. I have to swap out. I did run the calc. Uh, there was a chance I could have lived, but I didn't want to risk it, so I did swap out. Predicting the Volt or even the Thunderbolt, I did go into Nidoqueen because he only he's revealed Volt Switch, uh, Thunderbolt, I believe, and U-Turn. Nidoqueen obviously doesn't care about any of those, so I bring in Nidoqueen for free, and he brings in his Dragonite. So I was like, okay, I will just fire off a Sludge Wave, and I'll break this thing's multi-scale, which is fine. Um, he goes for Roost, though. Uh, I, 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 I think he was just trying to get his multi-scale back if I went into Sneasel there or something. But I'm not going to let him keep his multi-scale. So I will I will sit here and I will spam Sludge Wave. He, think, he, he realizes that I'm not going to let him get his multi-scale back so he just fires off an Earthquake. I am physically bulky so I do eat the Earthquake and I fire off another Sludge Wave. Bring this thing down. I believe that's a crit. No, it's just a high roll. I mean, he goes for the E-Speed. There was no need for him to E-Speed. He probably could have just fired off another Earthquake. Um, but yeah, the, the Dragonite is a good range of health. So, and he's not Dragon Danced up, so I know that Manaphy outspeeds. I can fire off an Ice Beam and take down the huge threat that is Dragonite. Dragonite is out of the picture, and again, I'm, I'm looking good. Manaphy is here, outspeeds everything on his team except the Zapdos, which I, again, fully expect 
to come in here and I'm getting more leftovers which is very important because the more leftovers I get the higher chance I have to live the Thunderbolt or the Volt Switch. So yeah the obvious play is obvious he brings in the Zapdos and again um, I do get a free swap into my either Nidoqueen or Rhydon because from the moveset he's revealed he can't touch either one. So I, here I decided to bring the Rhydon and then he goes for the Volt Switch. He's now locked into Volt Switch so hey boys I get a free Rock Polish. I get a free rock polish here, and um, this is when he brings in his hitmon top and he reveals that he is Intimidate. Now when I saw the Intimidate, I was like, okay, he's bulky. So I can take any one hit from this hitmon uh, top, Hitler top, because Hitler is hilarious. But he goes for the take out, like, he has no reason not to, that's fine. Um, but I still take any one hit, so I fire off an Earthquake, I do it at speed, I want to gauge the damage. Now, uh, judging by that damage on the Earthquake, if he wasn't... Intimidate, I would have two hit KO this, and he hits me with a con co close combat, and I'm EV Light, so I eat it up. So I was like, okay. Uh, I outspeed this, so I could throw off another Earthquake and have uh, uh, Manaphy come in at the end and sweep. So I just went for the safe Earthquake. I had no reason not to. Uh, so he brings in the Zapdos on the Earthquake. Smart play by him. Here, I fully expected him to double, or even U-turn, U-turn into the Hitmon top to get the double Intimidate on the Rhydon, which is what he did, he did U-turn, and he is gonna go into the Hitmon top. So, Manaphy's here, he's at half health, he's at a range where I cannot live uh, a Thunderbolt from the Zapdos. Um, but even if he does lock himself into Thunderbolt, I do have two ground types, so I'm not that worried about it. I'm just, at this point, honestly, I'm just trying to style. <laughs> but um, I do outspeed this Hitmon top, um, I, I don't think, because he's not Technician, a combination of Fake Out and Mach Punch will not kill me. So I am safe to fire off a Scald. I believe that's what I do. Obviously I want to get my leftovers to try and maybe live a Volt Switch if I have to. But yeah, um, he swaps out and I do just click Scald, I believe. And he does bring in the Zapdos. I don't know why he swapped, to be honest, because the Zapdos, because it's offensive, um, it does kind of just drop to the Scald, which it does. It does drop to the Scald. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know why he made that play. I, I really don't. Like, I don't, I don't know. You have to ask Lee on that one. But uh, now that Zapdos is gone, his answer to the Manaphy is kind of, kind of, kind of dead too. So here, um, he gets the Intimidate again. It, it doesn't matter. I can just fire off a Scald. Uh, well, he goes for the Fake Out. Again, why not? Free Fake Out. Free Fake Out is free. Free damage. Can't, can't argue against that. I basically get uh, leftovers back. I get it all back. Which is fine. Uh, so I just fire off the Scald. I know it won't do much because he might be Assault Vest, but that's fine. I don't care. Uh, I don't get the burn, sadly, and he does go for close combat, which at this range will knock me out, and that is fine. That is 100% fine with me. Because I can pretty much bring in anything to kill it. And I decided to bring in Registeel. Even though Registeel is slower, I take one close combat and I will just uh, Seismic Toss it to take the win. So that is um, GG to me, GG to Lee. Good game, Lee. I enjoyed that battle a lot. Um, you had me worried with the hit on top at the end. It could have potentially brought you back the game, but I played around it and we had a little chess match at the end. So Seismic Toss here will take it out. And I, I do figure out that he is Rocky Helmet. So, yeah, um... GG to Lee, very good game, very good game. But I am now uh, six and two, I believe, six and two in the CCL. I'm doing well, I'm doing well. But yeah, um, I want everyone to go tweet at Lee and say good game from us. The Canalave Carnivines are now six and two, I believe. Uh, if I'm wrong on that, I'm sorry. But um, I will be back in two weeks with my round nine battle against Trent, aka Curum Hunter, whose draft is terrifying. He has like Mega Altaria, Skarmory, and Cresselia, and I need to figure out a way to break through that. So I will, yeah, I, I'm gonna have fun with that trend. But um, I'll be back then with a team builder in my battle. So yeah, uh, make sure you subscribe to the CCL. Subscribe to me if you enjoyed. Leave a like. Uh, go follow CCL on Twitter. Follow all the coaches. Follow Lee. Tell him I sent you. Wish him love and good game, Lee. And I enjoyed that very much. But I'm gonna get out of here, guys, and I will see you guys soon. Bye bye.